irmãos, a paz do Senhor. My brethren, peace of the Lord. Nós vamos abrir as nossas We're going Bíblias. to open our Bibles. Evangelho segundo escrito. The Gospel João, according to it was written by John. A do verso 35. Chapter 1 from verse João, 35. Capítulo 1, a partir John do verso 35. João 1, 35. John 1, first. Verse 35 says the following. Again, the next day, John stood with two of his disciples. And looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and, seeing them following, said to them, What do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say when translated, Teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. Now it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and follow him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Now when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated, a stone. Amen? My brethren, chapter 1, here of the Gospel of John, all the way to verse 18 and from verse 19 shows a little bit of uh, shows a little bit of the conversation of John the Bast Baptist had with a uh, few of his followers. John the Baptist was a man that had his heart that was geared towards the gospel and to serve the Lord. He preached what what was the the Bible, the scriptures of the time for the man, for men. But John the Baptist, he knew very well that after him, someone would come that would guide men to have a, even a greater experience with the Lord. And he was always waiting for it. He was awaiting for the fulfillment of this prophecy. And because he was a preacher of the word of the Lord, he had a couple of followers. And now, here the word shows that John the Baptist, he was performing his role doing what was the will of the Lord, preaching, baptizing. And there, he was having a conversation with his disciples until the moment in which he saw Jesus. And when he saw Jesus, and Jesus came to be baptized by John the Baptist, and John the Baptist, when he saw through a vision that would land upon Jesus, a dove, at that moment, John the Baptist had this, the discernment and the understanding that that Jesus was truly the Messiah, the Lamb of God, that was going to take away the sin from the entire humanity. At that moment, was a very important moment. The sign of the dove upon Jesus was what was defined the understanding of John the Baptist regarding the project of God to save men and no longer through law but through grace. And now we read verse 35 that says the following. In the following day, John was already there with his two disciples. The following day, John again, he had a meeting with the Lord Jesus. And in fact, he caused the disciples to go toward Jesus and to go there and ask questions to Jesus and have a conversation with Jesus and to know Jesus with greater depth. And they went to Jesus. And that's the text that we just read. John the Baptist there, he informed this man 
the understanding that, that they needed in order to have an experience and to know the reason why Jesus came to the world. And my brethren, this teaching from the Word, this teaching regarding the life of Jesus, this teaching is being given to men in many different ways. We see this through, through the Word, inside of the churches, and the church, they speak a lot about Jesus. They tell Jesus as uh, present Jesus as savior of humanity, and we also see this teaching being given more than ever in our days. So the teaching regarding Jesus is being given in a way, uh, a great way today. Man now knows Jesus in many different ways. Man can know Jesus through a, a book. Man can know about Jesus through a. Uh, uh, a course, a uh, course of the theology. He may know Jesus through teachings or through speech and through uh, seminars. They may even know about Jesus through a, uh, the media and more than ever, the name Jesus is being preached. Because that's, that's the will of the Lord. The intention of God is exactly this. And many times, many times, this teaching that is done through Jesus is being preached in a mistaken way. Man, many times, tries to take advantage of the situation and speak about Jesus in a critical way or in a mistaken way, but it doesn't matter. What matters is that the voice of God, the sent of God, is being proclaimed. That's what matters to us. Because the word of God, the prophecy of God, is being fulfilled in the life of man. Isn't it true? But the truth is that man is becoming aware that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one goes to God but through Him. And my brethren, many times, knowing God, knowing Jesus, is not linked to the desire of the one who is preaching the Word. Knowing God is linked to a heart of the one who, who needs to hear about Jesus. The person's heart needs to be connected to a good intention. Man's heart need, needs to be open in order to hear about Jesus and to believe that Jesus truly is the Messiah. And man will only be able to understand and accept Jesus as the Savior of their lives if the Holy Spirit reveal himself to, to that person. If that person is guided, conducted by the Holy Spirit, that's why it's so important for us as a church. That's our mission as preachers of the Word. We need to have in us the grace, the anointing, and the boldness, the authority given by the Holy Spirit so that whenever we speak about Jesus, when we show and teach that Jesus is the only way, that person that is hearing may be touched. That person may be worked on by the Holy Spirit. So the secret in order for men to know Jesus is in man's sincerity, in the sincerity of their heart, because it takes pleasure in the contrite heart, in a pure feeling, God, uh, a pure heart God never rejects. We need to have this uh, control of the Holy Spirit and provide the environment in which the Holy Spirit may be poured out, the environment in which the Holy Spirit may enter into the heart of man, and convince man of his evil ways and to follow Jesus. And the heart of Andrew, we see here, he had sincerity 
When he met Jesus, the disciples of John, they wanted to have truly an experience with Jesus. They wanted to know Jesus because that was a promise from God that Jesus was going to be the Savior of their nation, and that Jesus was going to be the Savior of the Jewish people. And the heart of Andrew, he desired to have this meeting. And so, in the same way today, in our days, many people, they want to meet Jesus. Many people want to hear about Jesus. Many people want to have experiences with Jesus. Many people need to receive a miracle from the part of God. That's why, my brethren, we need to have from God um, we, we need to have the means to be proclaimers of the return of Jesus so that every time a man enters into our virtual meeting and in the future they enter into a temple, into our churches, they truly be able to see that there the Holy Spirit is, has rested, has landed upon our lives, that they may not have an experience with men or with the preacher, the messenger, or with the sister. No, that they have an, ex uh, um, an exper special experience that the Holy Spirit is there. And that's why we need blessed services. That's why we need to have a complete direction from the Holy Spirit. We need to have instrumentalists, a group of intercession, deacons, pastors. They need to be all surrounded by the Holy Spirit. That's what we need to preach. That's what the church needs to see when John the Baptist there, when he was waiting for the Messiah, but he didn't know who he was. But when he saw the dove, landing upon Jesus, he was sure that Jesus was the, the one who was sent by God. My brethren, what a wonderful feeling is the one of Jesus towards men. How wonderful it is also when man knows Jesus, when man has their intimate experience with Jesus, and much more. This is the experience also that we have with the Lord. That once we had, when once we have been brought, once it was shown to us, was taught to us, the thought, the the path that we need to follow was Jesus. That was our experience. It is wonderful. This feeling is wonderful. What Jesus feels towards man, the way in which he died for man, the way in which he gave himself for man, and in this way, Jesus never denies the blessing for the ones who are there with a uh, sincere heart, seeking the Lord, repented. The blessing of living in fellowship in the house of the Father. They wanted to know, where do you live? They asked Jesus, Rabbi, where are you staying? And Jesus said, come and follow me. Come and see. And they stayed with Jesus the entire day. And knowing the house of the Father for us is very important. Because to know the environment in which the Holy the Spirit is flowing, where the Holy Spirit has complete freedom to heal, to comfort, to bring consolation. That's what we need to know Jesus, to need that, to know the house of the Father, because Jesus is the Son of the Father. In order for man to know the Father, he has to know first the Son. Because the Son is the one who is going to lead us to the house of the Father. And they asked, where are you staying? And Jesus come, said, come and see. And they went and saw where Jesus was, and they stayed with him that day. My brethren, that's the day that we, we wait for so much. The day in which we are going to meet with Jesus. And the, the day in which we are going to be led to live in the house of the Father and receive all the support and all the assistance that we need for our walk, everything that we need in order to overcome our daily lives. Because we know that a night is about to come, a night of doubt and sadness and persecution and deceit is upon the world. But if we, we 
if we are in this day, like today, in the house of the Father, like we are here today, in fellowship with the bread, and learning about the Word of God, singing songs to Him, receiving the benefits of, benefits of salvation and the security of being in the house of the Father, we will be blessed by the Lord. Yes, what are you seeking? What do you seek? Jesus asked, and what is your objective? What are you seeking? You, maybe you enter into the service, and sometime when you go into the house of the Lord, when you kneel down, or when in prayer you are seeking the Lord, what do you seek? The Lord knows, but we need to speak. We need to proclaim, because the true happiness of having a, a strong God beside us, that's what we need. That's what man needs to be guided and led by the Holy Spirit to know this Jesus. And tonight, that's our word, that's the message, that's our will, our desire that you truly Stop following your human understanding. Stop following what is your human human understanding, but that you may be taken over by the Holy Spirit and truly have an experience with Jesus, the Savior. Many times you you may have met Jesus, have known about Jesus many years ago, maybe on your youth or your childhood or as soon as you became an adult, we don't know. We have many people from many ages, from many cities of the country, people that were born here in the United States, but the important is this, that you have an experience and that this experience may be guided by the Holy Spirit because if you have this experience with Jesus, guided by the Holy Spirit, no one will take you away from the house of the Father. No one is going to take you away from the presence of the Lord. Amen. May this word speak to your heart and that this word may touch on your life tonight and that it may change your destination in the same way it changed the name of Simon. His brother went there and spoke to him. His name was Simon, but when Jesus met him, he said, he said, now your name is going to be Peter. And Peter was a servant of God. He was a disciple, became an apostle, a preacher of the word of God, and thousands of people got, got converted because of his, his message. And made this message, made this word, may change your destination, your understanding regarding Jesus, that you may become a follower. Not of a man, not of a name, but Jesus, the Christ, the anointed by God, the one who is going to show you the house of the Father. May the Lord bless us. Let's hear our song.
Glory to God. Let's have a word. One of the sisters can open their microphone and glorify the Lord because we are on the way. One day the Lord touched our hearts and today, by faith, we can glorify the Lord because of the blessings that we received and because we have not been deceived. We know where we are going to. Lord, Father, we glorify your name because one day you found us and you presented to us a project of salvation, of life, of true joy for us and with the sincerity of our heart. Every day, more and more, we have recognized and we thank you for this experience, for this so great love that one day you have demonstrated for us because you change our, li our lives, you transformed every pain into joy, you brought security to our days, and you have made us live a life of victories own. We praise your holy name, and we thank you for this work, for this project, for this life that today we have together with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord, because you are our beloved God, the Lamb of God, the Holy God of our lives. Blessed be your name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord gave a couple of spiritual gifts, and the spiritual gifts, they are being inserted in, into the Word, showing the importance that we have to have this understanding of Jesus. It can only be uh, simply a, a historical understanding or a literal understanding. No, our understanding about Jesus, about the salvation Jesus, needs to become an experience. And this experience we will only have if we allow the Holy Spirit to inhabit in our hearts. Amen. Let's pray, bring the service to a close. And I'd like to remind the brethren that our next service is going to be tomorrow. At 9 o'clock in the morning, we're going to have a Sunday school coming directly from Brazil through the transmission on YouTube. And tomorrow at 8 p.m., we are going to be once again here with yet another service of glorification to the Lord. Amen. Soon after the prayer, if anyone needs a prayer, we were able to overcome the, the technical difficulty here, and we are going to, if anybody needs a prayer, we are making ourselves available. We are going to s put you aside on a separate room. Lord God, we praise your name. And we ask, Lord, that your word may, at this moment, penetrate into the minds and be able to reach the heart of each one of us. And, Lord, that we may be able to carry the teachings and the spiritual gifts that, was given, that were given by the Lord. And, above all, that we may receive Jesus our as our Savior, and that we may never leave this path, Lord, and that your Spirit may have freedom to operate into the minds and hearts and showing the true path who is Jesus, because we know, Lord, that whenever it takes place, no one will be able to steal our blessing, receive the glorification of your people, even though, Lord, we are going we are still on this virtual service we also we although know that we are united by faith through a single spirit and we glorify your name for this receive our adoration is a prayer that we say in the name of jesus in your name we say that the wonderful grace of our lord and savior jesus christ the love of god our eternal father and the sweet and tender consolations of the holy spirit you pour out upon all of us now and forevermore amen 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 my brother 
wish you all the peace of the Lord. If anyone needs a prayer, we at this moment make ourselves available to whoever needs a prayer. Peace of the Lord. You can open up the microphones and say hello to one another. Paz do Senhor, Igreja. Paz do Senhor, Paz do Senhor, Linda. Paz do Senhor, irmão. Irmã Nu, Paz do Senhor, querida. Paz do Senhor. Paz do Senhor, Paz Gabriela, Paz do Senhor. Paz do Senhor. O Senhor te chamasse. Tá de Senhor. Irmãos, já que ninguém se manifestou é, assistente, eu gostaria de reunir o Eu gostaria. Ah, oração, Eu mandei uma mensagem.